Hello, and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about a debugging technique that I use quite often and might be useful to you as well. And that is the dir function, which is useful when you don't happen to have tab complete, because for whatever reason, sometimes it's broken while debugging due to you know, various various things. Um, but let's let's show that. Uh, and I'm going to show you an interactive example where I'm debugging pre-commit. So let's jump into that. Uh, okay, so we're in pre-commit. Um, I am going to add a breakpoint to the Python bit of pre-commit. Uh, pre-commit languages Python. And let's say today that we're going to be debugging this run hook function. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint in here. Uh, and again, if, if you want more about breakpoint or debugging, I'll link the debugging video in the description. Uh, that goes over a lot of PDB, which I'm going to be using a little bit today as well. So let's say that we're debugging this. Uh, one way we can do that is by triggering pre-commit run flake eight all files. And you might be at this location here and you might type list to say, oh, where am I at? Um, and you know, you might have tab complete or you might not. In this case, for whatever reason, it's broken. I'm actually pressing the tab key right now and it's not doing anything. Um, <laughs> I've messed up my dot files, so that's why that's not working, but anyway. Uh, one function that I find really, really useful when you don't have tab complete is the dir function. And the dir function will show you all of the names that are attached to an object. So if you do dir hook, you can see that these are all of the attributes. And of course, this might not be as readable as you want. So you can use the pretty print function or the pretty print command in PDB. And that will you know, make it a little bit easier to see all of the different names. You don't have to like squint and scroll through that list of things there. You can kind of see them all here. And so you can say, oh, I was looking for entry. And so then you can type hook.entry and do whatever whatever debugging you want to do here. Uh, another cool thing about the dir function is, so you've seen when I pass a single argument to it. So if we do, you know, dir, dir hook, we get all of the attributes of that thing. If we don't pass any arguments at all, dir will just show you all of the names that are in that particular scope. So if, we're, if we just do dir here, you'll see that we have these three variables that are available. Um, and if we look at you know our list here, that's because um, those are the three arguments that came into this function. If there were other arguments or local variables, you would also see those in dir with no parentheses, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, one slightly more advanced thing about dir is you can actually customize what dir returns by making a custom object. So let's let's come up with a silly example here where you know we have a class and maybe it has no, um, I don't know. <laughs> Let's make a silly example. Uh, you know, self.x equals one. And for whatever reason, you wanted to also make a magic get adder. Uh, this is a hook to allow you to have additional attributes on a class that are dynamically created. And so let's say that we wanted, you know, um, if the attribute is a lowercase letter or something, that it would always return x. Or for, I don't know. We're, this is a completely silly example. Uh, so let's do if if adder in string dot ascii oops, ascii lowercase return self dot x. Otherwise, raise attribute error adder. I think this silly object will work. <laughs> Uh, C equals C, C dot A. Yeah, so any any letter will work, but any you know capital letter or something else will give you an attribute error. But if we look at the dir of this object, dir of C, you'll notice that it only knows about this X attribute, even though we've set all of these other special attributes here. And what we can do is we can override the hook for dir and return all of the values there. Um, I guess I should, you know, as we do type annotate this properly, uh, this would be stir to any from typing import any, although in our case, it's always going to return integers. So I guess we could say stir to int, and this will return a list of stir from typing import list. And um, what I usually like to do here is make a list that is uh, the super classes dir. This will get anything that object thinks is an attribute. 
Um, and then I usually like to extend that with uh, whatever dynamic attributes, if you can compute them. Sometimes it's impossible to compute them. But in, in this case, we can add all of the ASCII lowercase uh, names into this list. Then I usually like to sort it. I don't remember whether this is necessary in the latest version of Python. I guess we could we could try that out uh, and return that list. So if we rerun this thing again, uh, oh cool, it sorts it for us. We don't have to do any sorting there. Nice. Yeah. So you can see we get all of all of the things here, and then we get A through Z. So it properly shows your dir here. Uh, I'm actually curious what happens if we leave out the saver class. Does that remove all of the magic methods? It does. So it's usually a good idea to include the uh, superclass attributes here. Let me just do one last check here and make sure that this type checks. It's possible that I have this incorrect and PyPy will tell me. Uh, nope, looks like it's good. Cool. So you don't need to sort. You do need to get the superclass attributes and you can extend whatever attributes that you want here. Anyway, that's dir. Hopefully that's helpful. I, I realize the end part of this video is a little bit more advanced than the beginning part. So hopefully, you know, at least you got something out of the, uh, the beginning part. But anyway, if you have additional stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.